Okay, so I was asked uh, some questions on um, shepherding of one's, uh, relating to Hawkins, really, shepherding of one's inner archetypal sheep. Well, you know, um, there are sheep in me. I mean, I could say there's the gluttonous donut overeater. Uh, there's the probably the gossiper. Uh, there's the l lustful, leering um, addict. Um you know, there's the thief in me, uh, the, degree, the, the the Scrooge in me. So there's various archetypes in me. You know, I, um, that would be a form of therapy to go through the archetypes and to figure out, you know, that there's the dark and then uh, the light side of each archetype. Uh, you could get a list of them and start cancelling the negative side, just like Hawkins did on the levels of consciousness. There's the dualities that hold it in place the attractions and the aversions you could cancel them i mean to my to my view if you're I'm, I'm, um, going straight for the jugular enlightenment the highest level of enlightenment i wouldn't bother wasting my time except to be uh, spiritually aware about them like i wouldn't go to a pla place where they're offering free donuts for the whole night i wouldn't go to um, orgy you know i mean it's not you know, uh, I wouldn't go to uh, buffet restaurants. I wouldn't go to a den of criminals. You know, it's just like, just avoid those places and avoid those people. Because it's going to, uh, you know, if I have to transcend something that's coming up very loudly on one of the inner archetypes, I will. But I generally avoid people, places and situations that can trigger my archetype and go for the jugular if I'm straight after enlightenment, really... Um, dissolving the experience uh, and trying to get to the final doorway otherwise you can spend hundreds of years you know like let me read 10 books on on Jungian archetypes and let me do like a hundred years of step work on the archetypes and how they play out in my consciousness that could be like 50 years and uh, just you know uh, transcending thought and going straight for the light the doorway relentlessly uh, it would be, in my view, faster, as long as you're not stupid, you know. Uh, but to some extent, you know, um, it's almost like going into the Jungian therapeutic realm. And I wouldn't do that stuff. It's very interesting to the ego. You can spend a few hundred years doing that stuff. Um, but I think there's faster ways to get straight to enlightenment. Uh, I do have strong views on um, distractions. Uh, my view, you know, Hawkins is at 1,000. His books are more or less at 1,000. You know, even if the book of Urantia calibrated at 230 rather than 180, I mean, I wouldn't waste any time on it. You know, it's a, what is it, aliens or um, some wisdom from the other dimensions? Bullshit. You know, I mean, why do I want to research that stuff? It's just ego curiosity. I don't want to uh, investigate um, tarot cards. I don't want to investigate. I don't want to investigate. You know, if I've got a teacher at 1,000, why am I investigating things, even calibrating at 300, 400? I mean, as part from if I know it's a distraction, I'm indulging in it. But if I've got 1,000, and, you know, if there's a, if, the, if my teacher has given me all, the, all that I need to, Hawkins has given me all that I need to to get the highest level of enlightenment, you know, reading reading books which are useful but aren't going to get me straight to enlightenment for me is really a form of distraction. Like I could probably read some of these books for a few hundred. I could probably do archetypes for a few hundred years. But uh, I think, you know, I mean, thing of like um, dissolving the attachment to thought, um, being in the observer of the world and going to the detached observer, those go for the jugular reading 300 books and archetypes and then cancelling all the levels of the archetypes and then researching another few hundred and then doing a few hundred years of step work on the different archetypes is, is going to be a lot of fun, but it's not going for the jugular. Reading books on the Urantia, or even if it calibrated at 300, which I doubt, probably more like 250 or 230. I mean, what a waste of time. I mean, I see, I see when, when, there's a few years left before you die. I mean, I wouldn't waste time on that stuff. Uh, myself, that's my view, especially if you want to go. Hawkins has everything you need in it. 
you know, and he he does mention that lots of other stuff. He, he mentions the books of the Western world. He sometimes recommends them. I, mean, I, I don't recommend reading, spending 10 years reading the books of the Western world. And, uh, you know, when Hawkins material can get you straight to enlightenment very quickly. I mean, it's like those books calibrate in the 400s. So that's that. Uh, I won't go on and on about that. Uh, go for the jugular. Hawkins is enough. The ego is curious. As soon as Hawkins says, like, books of the Western world, this book, that book, he says a lot of stuff. And that is useful to people at certain levels. But if you can go for the jugular, I'd go straight for the jugular. Otherwise, the ego is very interested in reading lots of books and doing lots of work uh, rather than being silent, getting to the infinite silence within. So go for the jugular. I, I would if you're up for it. Don't let your ego distract you into exploring things you don't need to explore. And in terms of um, all the dangerous stuff in the third eye, well, I, I just try and avoid those things and stick to holy company. Otherwise, you will get lessons, you know, 300 doesn't calibrate that high, 400 doesn't calibrate that high, 500, you know, 540 is the big book, 600, of course, the miracles, Hawkins at 1000, you know, I recommend 540 and 600, 540 for most people have to get an awareness of addiction, 600 to start getting the meaninglessness of thoughts, and then Hawkins is going for the jugular up there at 1000. So I wouldn't, I would, otherwise the ego will just waste time on things at 300, 400. And, uh, you know, you can spend a few hundred years doing therapy and archetypes as well. That's my view. Anyway, if it doesn't ring true for you, um, you know, I'm sure Hawkins will guide you. Um, okay, cancellation. Well, I used to be a hypnotherapist. And, you know, I am pretty sure that saying a cancellation out loud uh, is far better the, the ego will dis, then the ego is more easily to distract you if you're doing it silently you can sort of its inner voice can start rambling on and distracting more easily than if you're saying it loud and fast like um i don't know i cancel i cancel the meaning of thought i cancel my addiction to thoughts i'm an infinite being subject only to what i hold in mind you say it like 100 miles an hour in fact fast prayer i recommend fast prayer is very efficient but like I did the Lord's Prayer, had spectacular miracles. When your ass is on fire, I mean, you pray, you don't pray slowly. You pray at 100 miles an hour until you get relief. Uh, so I, I recommend it that way. The thing with prayer is, uh, and cancellation is you do it relentlessly, nonstop, until your ego shuts up. Uh, you don't give it space to talk. You're doing it that fast. That's my thing on cancellations. And, you do, and it can take years sometimes, months, weeks. You just be relentless at it. Um, the ego eventually gives up. How do you know it gives up? It goes silent. That belief becomes non-existent. It disappears from your consciousness. Okay. Um, just, you know, you just bore it to death. The ego gives up. If you do it for like 20 hours nonstop every day, say, I'm going to do this every day for 20 hours until you give up. Yeah, you know, every day. Eventually, your ego will give up. It will say, "I'd rather give it up than have to listen to all these <laughs> cancellations nonstop, relentlessly, uh, hour after hour, and fast." So, don't give your ego oxygen, in my view. But you do. It's easy to do that when you're desperate. It's not easy to do that when you're not desperate. Um, okay. Uh, final doorway. Yes. End on this. Final doorway. Okay, my experience with the final door is so, you know, it's, it's okay. I think it's very valuable. Um, so I was quite in my early days. So the final doorway can come up. Uh, I do encourage anyone for the highest level of enlightenment to be prepared for the final door. It's to come at any time, probably, and Hawkins says, when it's unexpected. So I was quite new to spiritual work. I was into Hawkins of the Passion and into another teacher who's fallen subsequently. I don't usually mention his name. Um but um, anyway, I was watching this now fallen teacher and he was going like, well, you just chop your attachment to thoughts, chop your attachment to the body, chop your attachment to the emotions, chop, chop, chop. And he meant it like go for the jugular, just chop everything you've got in your ego that you cherish and go for the jugular, you know, just slice its throat and get to enlightenment now. And he was going through all the things my ego would hold on to and he was just giving these violent samurai movements 
and suddenly the terror of the death of the ego came. I was with two other Hawkins students. We all three of us, the the terror of the death of the ego arose at the same time. And I learned a lot. You know, I knew this was the not not the terror of the death of the body, which is totally different. You know that this is the death of the ego, and it will never re-energize again ever for all eternity. It's a different terror than just being run over by a bus or something or dying of old age. Anyway, it came up extremely terrifying, uh, horrifying terror. And immediately, the first thought that came into mind, and I and embarrassingly, I latched onto that thought my great regret was oh you if you go through the terror you burst into tears in front of the other two people you know you lose your vanity you look uncool and i latched onto that thought and it was like the doorway that god had opened for me now's your chance if you face the terror hold no thought hold nothing back latch onto no thought before me and i think that's what i mean it didn't say that to me well now i can see that's what it was saying Hold no thought or no attachment to the world, not even for a split second, and jump in and, and let your ego die. I didn't. I latched onto a thought, which is I'm too embarrassed to cry in front of other people. It was like the doorway immediately slammed. You know, it was like, okay, the terror disappeared. It was like, you know, for me now, it's like God was saying, if you could say something, well, asshole, you had your chance and you just chose a stupid, ridiculous thought. So you're back, you're going to be back there and uh, just stick around until you. I'll give you another chance. And here I am, probably about 15, 20 years later, and it's so embarrassing, waiting for the next doorway to be opened, whether it happens this lifetime or another, I don't know. So uh, the other two people, the man I knew very well, he's dead now, uh, bless him, bless his soul, but um, he told me as soon as the terror arose, he had a thought of his... Uh, I don't know, maybe 10-year-old or 7-year-old son. And the thought came, I cannot leave my son behind and go through the terror. Uh, and the doorway shut for him. So very similar to me. But at least his, his, his excuse for not going through the terror sounded leg more legitimate than crying. But the same thing, um, he latched on to a thought. He didn't want to leave and go through the death of his ego for his child. And the doorway shut immediately on him. And the lady there, I asked her, after many years, I tracked her email because I forgot what she said. And she actually forgot the reason she turned down the doorway. She had just blanked it all out, which could be what happened, really. It's horrible to deny, to deny God. So be prepared. As soon as the terror rises, hold no thought, hold no attachment, not even for a split second. Jump into the terror and let it die. Let it die for all eternity. As Hawkins explains, it's worth um, it's worth. I've been in the light. That light for all eternity is more beautiful than anything this world can offer. So uh, that's also, you've heard Hawkins' testimony, um, so you know you can trust that. Okay, I'll shut that, stop this video. Uh, 